We continue to preview the 2023 college football season. Today, our stop is Winfield, Kansas, and we get to visit with Brad Griffin, who's the head football coach for the Southwestern Mound Builders. Coach, a 9-2 and two season in 2022, coming off yet another conference championship, yet another trip to the NAIA playoffs. Let's start right there. If you don't mind, tell us a little bit about last season that brings us up to where we are now. Yeah, you bet. Uh, appreciate you having me on. Um, you know, we've made a lot of progress over the last three or four years. It, uh, last couple of years have been really fun getting a chance to uh, not only win the conference, but get in the national playoffs. And uh, last year was amazing to, to be able to, you know, you kind of set the bar pretty high in 21 to be able to do what we did and um, to follow that up. Uh, it was just a testament to we got a great staff and, and great kids here and a lot of support on campus and in our community here at Winfield. And so um, it's definitely, um, you know, I don't know if it was a surprise internally. I think uh, a lot of people didn't know if we could do it again. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was an exciting, exciting season. It was a disappointing uh, finish. You know, you, a year ago we went out to Indiana and played Marion well, two years ago and, you know, got to stay a little bit closer and go up to Atchison and play Benedictine and, um thought we had a pretty good draw and we were we were a little banged up but in the end we just we didn't quite play as well as we'd like to have but definitely um you know um, uh, an exciting and fun season and kind of hopefully building something good here we'll see if we can continue to have success coach i think it's a testament to your program because of the way the league has grown and really shown itself to be a stronger and stronger league every year and to continue to be at the top like that. And, of course, the league has added a number member. Another member, we'll talk about that at the end. Let's look ahead to 2023 now as a number of seniors on that roster last season have moved on, and that includes uh, players that had the lead spot on, on uh, from the quarterback position. Brad Cagle, who was uh, a fantastic performer for you. Luke Barnes, who filled in and, and uh, performed admirably as well over the course of the last season. Neither of those players coming back. Thomas Yam still in the fold. Yeah, you know, when when you go all the way back when we first started this, um, this whole thing being here, and you know, I think at any level, it's all a, a lot of uh, your success can be around how well you can play at that position at quarterback. And so, um, you know, we've been blessed here the last couple of years to have some, some, some pretty good ones and, and somehow have had good depth there as well. Just hasn't been our healthiest position. We've been banged up there a little bit with those guys, but two phenomenal players and those two guys you mentioned in Barnes and Cagle, those guys are gone. And Cagle's actually at Bethel coaching now. So we got him a job over there, which is awesome. Love to have kept him here, but he got a full-time job right out of high school or right out of college. So you can't, uh, can't be upset about him going over there. But um, yeah, Thomas is back and he's played a lot of uh, games for us. I mean, he started some games last year because of those guys being injured. He was our starter and played the, the whole game against Marion in the playoffs in 21. And so he's he's played some games. I mean, and he's a good player. And um, we've got a couple other guys. We've got a Christian Burke out of Bigsby, Oklahoma, who's going to be a good player for us, was a redshirt for us last year. And Braden Howell has been around for a couple of years. And um, has um, some played some college football snaps and actually won a game for us uh, a couple of years ago and he's been banged up but he's he's back healthy and and brought in a couple couple young kids as well we got a freshman out of Coweta, Oklahoma um, Kyle Starks will be a good player for us in the future and um, it's been it's been good we've been we've been able to, to recruit some good players there coach Martez Jones coming off an all-conference season for you last season, and uh, he'll be back. We're talking about skill positions. Let's talk about the run. Talk about the running backs. Yeah, in the backfield, we got Martez, and he's a phenomenal player. He got he broke his hand right before our playoff game, and it, it hurt us. But you know, we almost really didn't have him the whole game against K Dub last game of the year. And so, a guy by the name of um, Sam Hunter actually stepped in and was a redshirt freshman for us last year. And so, those two guys have had a great spring. Um, phenomenal uh, start to our camp here just in a short period of time. They're both explosive players and uh, got a couple other guys. It's probably our deepest position um, right now on, on the offensive side is our backfield. Well, it's, a, it's an offense that put up better than 30 points a game for you last year, and I know that's something that uh, would be good if you can continue those kind of numbers. Zion Kennedy comes back. He was a, a strong performer for you at the wide, wide receiver spot. 
Yeah, Zion's um, a solid player. He's another guy that we 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 had a lot of injuries last year. It was crazy. Zion got hurt mid season with a foot injury, um, and hopefully he's healthy. He's been looking good so far. Andre Jones was a guy that got his knee tore up. He's an All Conference player a few years ago, and he's back. Um, Josh Edson, who led the conference in receiving yards last year, will be back as well. And then we had a freshman step up, Matt Hothusen, was a phenomenal. Like he, you know, all these guys get injured. And he he was a guy we were going to redshirt for sure, and um, came in and, and made some unbelievable plays. Made a game winning catch for us against Avila, and, um, and then we've got a couple other guys that um, have really stepped up um, with the injuries last year that came in, and so. Um, the big one is Keyshawn Jones right now. We're, uh, we're kind of seeing if he's got another year. Um, we're, we're working on that. If he's eligible, um, he's about as good as they, they come in our, at our level. Uh, I'm not banking on that. I don't know if we're going to get him. It's not a, it's not a great issue. It's if we got a year left, that's kind of what we're seeing. If he, um, back in his Juco days, we're, we're seeing if there's something there. So potentially, but, um, We've been really good at receiver, and so hopefully we could continue to do so um, with those guys. You know, Coach, I'm I'm glad that we're getting past the COVID year and and all that went on there, and obviously 2020 as a whole. But it did seem like during that time that eligibility was just being handed out left and right. So it didn't matter what or where, so you got an extra year yeah. too. So uh, it's it's interesting to see now how it is falling back into place and and uh, learning how all of that goes. We're visiting with Brad Griffin now from Southwestern here on Midwest Sportsnet, and I encourage you, please continue to enjoy the videos here as we talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Southwestern, another conference championship season and picked at the top of your division now as it's moved to two divisions with 12 teams in the KCAC. So preseason coaches and media poll have you at the top uh, of the six-team division, the Kessinger division there. And, Coach, I, I – always like to get your opinion on the offensive line and get to talk about those guys because the stats aren't really there. So it, it's, it gives you a chance to promote those guys a little bit. Well, yeah, I was going to say something. Anyhow, I'm actually in that room with those guys. I coach the, right now I'm the tackles coach. So I've kind of been diving in the last few years coaching the offensive line. we got a great young coach and Yancey Vanisdale that works with those guys. But um, uh, it's another group that, uh, we have four or five starters back. Um, our center's a, a kid from Jinx and Hayden Crawley. Um, if, if those that are listening um, don't know, but we have probably over our half of our rosters from the state of Oklahoma. So um, us being the furthest south team and right, I mean, we're 10 minutes from the border basically. So tons of uh, Oklahoma kids. But uh, uh, Arnold Portillo was a – guy that started for us late in the season at tackle he's another Oklahoma native great player for us he'll probably play left tackle for us um, going into the fall and then um, our left and right guards are really really good players we got an all-american in our right guard and Aaron Garcia back and then right now I'd say it's a battle uh, at right tackle um, that'd be our biggest um, going into the camp here of who's going to fit that position and then just gaining depth um, you know, at all those spots will be, uh, um, you know, some battles we have going on there. But we have some good, some some really good young offensive linemen, uh, some kids that have been in the program for a little while. And so i um, super impressed so far. And so hopefully we'll continue uh, to, to do some good things there. Now, Coach, I, I am based in Oklahoma. I've lived in this state for a long time. And I was picking up on all those Oklahoma names that you were mentioning as you were running through the roster right there. So I, let's flip the script and go to the other side of the ball, staying with the line. Tell us a little bit about your defensive line in 2023. Yeah, you bet. Um, you know, it's our defensive line has probably been, honestly, our over the last couple of years, our, one of our best positions that we've um, all, all around with, with depth and being able to um, – you know, do a lot of great things in the run game. And, and so we return, uh, we, we rotate a lot of guys. We had a, a nose that was a good player for us last year that we graduated, but uh, Darren Hicks is the kid. It was kind of crazy, the whole COVID thing. He got hurt in COVID um, and graduated that year, but we had redshirted him on the front end. And so he, he graduated, sat out a year, got healthy, 
and then he played for us last year, when, and he's he's a tough one to block, and he's back for his basically sixth year. So um, it's nice to have these older guys around. And Shane Rodriguez, he's another Oklahoma kid that uh, was a first-team all-conference player. And uh, we've got uh, Jacarius Smith out there. He's another great player that's been back and played a bunch of snap for us, snaps for us. And then um, we have a couple other guys that we've rotated in, Jacardin Hardman, is a first teamer on most every everybody else's team. He just um, behind a couple of pretty good ones, and so, and then we picked up uh, a transfer from Langston um, in the fall, or, or this past spring. His brother's actually here again, another Oklahoma kid, and in um, in Johnny Smith, and so we're we're really um, I feel like we got great depth there, and um, we'll hopefully continue to have success up front. You have the depth, you have the experience. What kind of experience do you return then? I, I know that, again, so many seniors or were listed as seniors on the roster in, in 2022. Who's coming back for you as linebacker? Yeah, we've got um, our Mike backer. Um, it's Josh Carter. He's kind of been, he's honestly like, um, he's, a, he's a Wichita kid. He's been in the program. We had Grant Torgerson forever, and Josh kind of played for him for the first couple of years, and then um, he's been our starter the last two years, and he's just a phenomenal leader, and kids love him. And he's he is um, kind of the the anchor of our defense, um, high motor guy, plays extremely well, and um, he'll be back um, going to grad school and and you know taking advantage of COVID. And so uh, excited, you know. I think he was a first teamer last year, and so um, after that, you know, we graduated. Um, my nephew actually was a player for us for five years, and. Uh, was a good player and he's done he's actually coaching now and so um we've got cameron cornelius is back he played a lot of reps for us last year i believe he started some games Kari jackson's back played a lot of games for us last year uh, both those guys have a couple more years um, and then after that i think it's really a, a, a battle to to see who's gonna um, kind of be those role guys we on defense we play a ton of guys i mean we rotate a lot of guys in and out and so I think we have a good core group of guys there um, that will be able to come in and, and get a lot of um, you know quality plays there. I was just about to jump on over to special teams, but I don't want to do that without talking about your secondary. Can you tell us a little bit about who is coming yes, back here and maybe some new additions? Yeah, we've got um, you know we're not a big transfer heavy team, and we've like we brought in five or six transfers that semester, and we brought in two. Um, this fall, I mean, every, our recruiting's and this whole thing's been built around high school kids. We just think that's the way to do it, to develop, to con continue to have, you know, some stability and um, not a lot of change and all that. And so, um, but anyhow, we've got um, both of our starting corners are back. Tavion Williamson and Richard Holmes um, will be back. Uh, we'll be breaking in a couple new safeties. We did bring in a, a couple transfers there um, that will, could potentially start for us. So. Um, Caden Bowie is a kid that played corner for us and has played a lot uh, over the years, and we've moved him to safety. Um, another Oklahoma native, I think he's from Collinsville, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think he'll he'll kind of anchor the back end. Um, uh, we've got, I think, some good depth there. Uh, our biggest, probably our biggest competition as far as, you know, I'm not uh, everywhere there's competition. There's no jobs solidified by any means. Our older guys have understand that at the same time we make sure they're ready to go and nice and healthy by saturdays but um i think that'll be the one spot all the way around um that will will definitely um have you know some question marks i would say all right then well there this may be an area where there's question mark at least from an outsider's perspective kegel was uh a punter for you and uh, madrano then kicked for you last season so Looks like you're going to have someone new there, at least from that vantage in your special teams. Yes, yes, we will. We'll have, um, you know, we'll have at, at both of those spots, we'll have somebody new there. And it's it's really um, right now a toss up. We got um, Preston Fancher's not really kicked a lot for us in games, um, but it had a great spring. Uh, another Oklahoma kid. And then uh, brought in a freshman kicker from Stillwater that will give him a challenge and it may be uh, by committee. Honestly, that's um, um, what we may do. And, and um, we're not afraid to put Thomas back there and punt the ball. It's kind of, we kind of get in a, 
some some crazy formations and try to keep return teams vanilla and um, and you know just kind of put an athlete back there that can rugby kick it down the road or down the down the field. So uh, I think we'll be fine there. But yeah, the, it'll it'll be interesting to see who's kicking for us. Well, I'm I'm enjoying listening to <laughs> you talk about all the Oklahoma players again being here in state. That's yeah. kind of fun to hear. And and of course you you are just right there by the state line. You don't go too far up 35 before you have to turn and make your way over to Winfield. Uh, Coach, one last thing, and that is the schedule as we're looking ahead. It's a 12-team KCAC heading into 2023 with the addition of Evangel. You all in the Kessinger division. Now, you play a lot of crossover games first, which, again, now you have a a good, strong 11-game schedule getting to face all the teams in in league, and so you don't have to worry about scheduling that much. August 26th, that's the, uh, the week zero, and you're at home taking on Ottawa there. September 2nd, you go to Avila. And then some more crossover games. You get the bye week, as as everyone in the KCAC does. Then you get those divisional games, and that's where playoff spots are on the line. Your first one is on the road at Friends. Not that far away. Just head up the road to Wichita. So tell us a little bit about that schedule. Yeah, uh, um, it'll be interesting. I mean, uh, it's it's going to be you know nice that that midway through the year to have that bye. I mean, the old schedule, you, your bye could have been week zero or you know week 10 and so with this everybody's on the same page i always kid uh, the other coaches in our conference it seemed like every team that we were getting to play they had a buy before they played us <laughs> so um, if you went back and looked at it I, it was about five or six times that happened in the last couple of years so um, they won't have to hear me complain about that anymore but anyhow um yeah i mean in the end, uh, if we want to continue to to keep this thing moving, those those first six games are just as important as the last you know five games. So we're going to have to play well every week. The conference is very very good, top to bottom. There is uh, there is no week week off. There's no no Saturday where if you don't show up, you better um, you better show up every Saturday. So um, but yeah, it'd be interesting. Um, you know how those those last five play out. Everybody will kind of get a have a real good idea of where they're at. Um, you know, their, you know, what their kids are all about and, you know, feel good about their schemes and all those things. By, by the time you really get into the true conference play and um, uh, friends is going to be a very, very good football team. And, uh, like I said, they all are, but um, it'll be, uh, I think it'll be fun as far as, uh, you know, knowing that uh, you can you finish strong in the year that you have a chance to, to win another conference championship and a chance to get in the playoffs. Well, we, we're going to continue to follow the Mound Builders, and, and it's been fun to follow you all. Again, playoff trips the last couple of years, conference championships the last couple of years as well. And, Coach, under your leadership, things are, are going the right way. Ninth season there in Winfield. It's been a privilege to get to visit with you today, Coach Brad Griffin here from Southwestern on Midwest Sportsnet. Thank you so much for taking time with us today. You bet. Appreciate it. Thank you for covering small college football. Appreciate it.